Good morning. He is not muted yet. Can you hear me? Hello. Hi, Mother. Yeah, hi, sir. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. So, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Mother Pandey, and I'm the Director of Partnership uh, for Uni Expert. Uh, welcome to the show. This is the first episode of our inaugural episode of Talk to the Expert. So the motive of this show is to take you through the life journey of the stalwart of the industries. So welcome everyone to the, to the Pankaj Jain sir. He, he's one of the living legend in the education abroad industry today. So we'll have him here for half an hour. So there'll be a series of questions that I'll be asking him in the first 20 minutes. Uh, I'll try to see the, to utilize the time the maximum I could, and and the last five to ten minutes will be open for all the guests who are joining in every minute. We already have more than thirty attendees, sir, and, and I'll keep on clicking and allowing them to join. So let's start with the inaugural show. Thanks a lot for coming here, sir. It, it's it's all it's always a great achievement for someone like me, whom you have taught for years how to work in the industry, and I've got a chance today to interview you. So welcome, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mother. Thanks for inviting me for the a talk uh, with expert show at Uni Expert. Thank you. So, sir, I'll, I'll begin with the first question, obviously. Uh, I have spoken to you uh, a lot about your academic life, about your career, but but can you just let the audience know a bit about your background from, from the city you were from, how you have been grown up, uh, what was your subject, especially in the class 12th, and, and who inspired you to choose that particular stream like commerce, science, like for me, I've taken science because my brother has chosen commerce. There was no other reason. But I would really like to know what had made you choose those subjects in your class 12. And after that, how you move on to do your engineering degree from where it was and what was the reason behind it. And then, then we'll, we'll, we'll take the show along. So, sir, up sure. to you. I would like to hear about a bit about your family, sir. Thanks, Mudat. I'm from Delhi, basically. I've grown and uh, lived in Delhi also. And uh, I did my 12th from Balwati School in uh, Gangaram Road, Patel Nagar area. And I took uh, PCM with computers and English. So obviously my inclination was to do engineering. After that, successfully I joined my engineering from DIT Kashmiri Gate, which is now called NSIT earlier and NSUT Dwarka. So I did my engineering there. And from campus, I got recruited to Tata Telecom in Bombay. That was my first job. Bombay, I moved to Baroda, which was my second posting, then to Delhi with work with at and for one year. Then I took a break and uh, went for MBA to University of Leeds, UK. I got a scholarship to do MBA, though at that time I had options in India also. But uh, I got a scholarship, so that was the choice. And then moving on, I came back, uh, worked with Alcatel Paris for one month in Colombes. But then my boss uh, from Alcatel Paris was shifting to India in Bangalore and opening the Alcatel head office in India. So I moved with him to uh, India in Bangalore. Then again worked with Tata Telecom for uh, one and a half year because they wanted me back to Tata Telecom since I was not an MBA graduate. And then University of Leeds approached me in December 1998 and I joined University of Leeds office, which was a South Asia office, which I started in 1999 in February, which was among the first few offices to open in India. Worked with them for 11 years, uh, very good experience, started the office, we were doing direct recruitment, no agents involved, uh, started with 40 students, built up to 454 students when I left in 2009, and then uh, I started my own consultancy, so I still was the management consultant for three years with business to lead, where we still manage the office in Connaught Place next to British Council in Mercatel House. Uh, then started my own consultancy, which was Career Plus Services, worked 11, 10 years sort of thing, did UK, did Canada, did Australia, did New Zealand, did Ireland, a lot of countries. Worked with agents all India, B2B and B2C also. And then the University of uh, UTS College in Australia, University of Technology, Sydney, approached me last year in 2020. And I joined them as a regional director of South Asia, looking after seven countries, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, uh, uh, Mauritius, Bhutan. Also. So, uh, so if you see like background for family-wise, father was a scientist in uh, IERI, which is Indian Agriculture Research Institute, he was head of environmental sciences, so that was obviously the push to join that. And my elder sister is a doctor from Gwalior, so 
so that was another inclination to join so that was a push and i got good marks 80% in class 12 sort of thing and i got a full scholarship to my 11th 12th at balwasi school so i shifted from another, another school which was still tense like rosary school in since i came so at that time in 11th 12th you if you had 80% marks you could get full scholarship to join so that is the push to join i prepared for iit gave an ss exam but obviously it did not clear so uh, at that time in our college in uh, delhi uh, dc and dit uh, we were getting admission to the best of 12th exam so uh, 12th score so i got to uh, dit in engineering uh, sir i can't hear you very clearly can you just bit a bit loud sure sure i'll do that the ac was on so so that was the motivation to join uh, engineering so you got an inspirational figure uh, in in form of your father and and sister already in your family which which actually drawn you towards science as a stream is that what you mean okay yes, so okay so uh, tell me something about your engineering days like how how was your experience while studying at the institutions were you like the same students who used to go out have fun do some bunking and then study or you were like a personality who is into education all the time like i have to go to class on time then i have to come back and read my books because you you secured really good marks so it's important for students to know like what kind of a day routine you should follow to attain such such marks in your in your engineering Now in engineering college, obviously, like uh, we joined Delhi University, uh, DIT, Delhi Institute of Technology, which was called earlier. So obviously, there is a rule in engineering college that once you join an engineering college, you will automatically pass. So whether you study hard, you don't study hard, you will technically pass. Maybe in four years, five years, six years. We had seniors who would pass in six years also. So uh, it was fun. It was different because obviously, from a school to coming to engineering college, where you had a hostel also. So I stayed. I stayed with some of our hostel mates also who were from outside Delhi. it was fun like engineering is obviously tough you study 64 subjects in 4 years which is eight subjects per semester so a lot of students bunk a lot of students fail and they do do repeats also but i was lucky that i did not fail so engineering was tough i would say there were like topics like thermodynamics and all which was very tough automobile engineering uh, topics but it was fun we used to bunk a lot of classes went to movies at chanakya and lot of places also and there was some pictures very close to our uh, engineering college in kashmiri gate also which is old delhi So went for movies there also. So bunking is part of engineering college. Bunking is part of all in all colleges. I would say not only engineering colleges. So, so, so good you know, students also also do that. That means yeah. And, and students would have seen the movie called Three Idiots, which is a very powerful and a very strong image of how engineering college is. You you do ragging also. You are ragged also. You sing songs also. You have to do a lot of other things also, which you saw in the movie also. So this is part of the fun culture at college also. so chalo i'll i'll not ask about uh, the engineering college uh, the the girl factor because madam must be watching this interview so it won't be good in a sense you, you have to go back and have food in you know. so I, I'll, i'll i'll not touch that part we will have some conversation about it later on maybe when when we'll be sitting down together but how come like after doing your engineering you were doing really well in the telecom sector just share a bit of your experience uh, of about the telecom sector and then i would like to go ahead with after doing the your tele it is it's from my side sir just just my apologies for a second so after entering into the telecom sector you were working quite well with the tata group what draws you towards a masters degree because a lot of students in india what they do you you have seen it you have counseled thousand of students once they enter into the engineering stream they normally don't go for masters program and in, even if they go they'll try to go for an mtech instead of an mba degree but but you doing from dit and working so well in tata you move ahead for a leeds university instead of having offer from so many good indian ve schools uh, yeah. what is actually what, what happened uh, when i joined tata telecom i was in sales in bombay which was a tough area to do uh, in the sense like uh, we used to i was my area was bandra to andheri so people who are from bombay would know and it was like i was staying in kolaba area and the office was in anyman point so it was a good job to do but next year i got shifted to baroda which was uh, uh, posting which we thought was quite relaxed but it was very tough we were given double the targets what baroda and gujarat was doing so our head office was in gandhi nagar in gujarat and i opened the amdavad office with my boss called chelender singh also so i think uh, i had the inclination to do a mba after my engineering and we were four batchmates who did engineering after who did mba after engineering after three years one went to amdavad one went to xlri 
one went to XI, one did his FMS uh, part time from Delhi, and I got an opportunity to do from SPJ, and I cleared Delhi. I cleared uh, three, four more exams in Bombay, but. I got an opportunity. I gave an interview through British Council, and uh, I was successfully interviewed for MBA. My dean of business school was here, and they gave me a scholarship. So I thought, why not go to UK because I had relatives in UK. Plus, it was a scholarship, so only the living cost at that time was three thousand to four thousand pounds. The pound was only seventy rupees, I think, what I remember, or fifty rupees. I don't remember now. So uh, I thought I'll do some part-time work and manage my living and stay. So I think. Exposure to UK was good. It was a learning experience also, and a lot, lot of students are confused because uh, we don't counsel clearly, and parents are not aware what is the future. But now there are options in engineering also. You can get jobs, but there are options in management also. There are so many private institutes, there are so many Indian institutes. I am even have 24, 25 institutes all over India. So I think whatever is your passion, what you like, if you follow the three idiots movie. What you like? If you like photography, do photography. Don't do engineering. So that is what the option is. If you like engineering, if you like research, do engineering. If you don't like, shift to management. So that is the choice you can take. So uh, I'll, I'll come back to a movie example that you just said. Three idiots. There was a dialogue in Three Idiots, which always there in in my mind. Ki kabil bano success jhak mar ke piche aayegi. Okay. So my question will be around this dialogue only today. that uh, you were already skilled in in one of the field that was the reason you you got selected with the top most company in india and then you got selected in one of the top institutions in india how does you see going abroad in terms of developing your skill in comparison to in studying in india and developing your skill the reason i'm asking you this question that today also when i counsel a student there are two major reason when a parent that parent normally come to me and first is the safety they ask for like how safe would be my kid when when he'll go abroad and the second most import, important question then they ask is like roi kya hoga because in india it's like an investment mba is a commodity we all know it's not a not a course at all it has been sold with different uh, uh, i mean to say uh, uh, sales point ki itne ka job lagega itne ka job lagega so it's it has been treated as a commodity invest uh, return towards investment in india but in abroad there is there is no concept of placement we all know so how do you compare over there in terms of skill development and and is dialogue ke piche hame kitna actual mein bhagna chahiye kabil bano success jhak mar ke piche aayegi obviously like uh, it is very true if you have done engineering from a good university if you have got a placement with a good company then obviously your career is secured right but i had the notion that we should work for 3 years to go to good universities in uk and in india because in university leads we had a requirement because of mbank criteria that we need to have 3 years experience when you apply right so that was the criteria obviously going to uk was a life changer in terms you got a lot of experience you were independent the thought process was more you worked with students from 60 countries across so you did case studies you were doing work together you were working part time you were cleaning the toilets Uh, you know you were making a food also which was a very big experience to make uh, while going to uk because indian kids do not know how to make food so, so i have learned everything do you have some good story to share when when we talk about cooking food <laughs> so it's very tough for people to know the reason i'm asking about the stories because i have a good one i didn't know how to make a dal and it was all i, I can't say what it was looking like when i make a dal it was looking like a cake Okay, so do you have some good stories to share about anything about part-time job or or around living in in UK? So living in UK was uh, okay in the sense that all students used to work, all our British students used to work, my batchmate from Bombay used to work. So I worked in a store also where you were lifting stores cans, you were uh, setting up stores, you were doing Kellogg's boxes and all those placement and replacement. So uh, that was a good job. Newspapers used to come, so used to see. Whenever Diana was on the front page, or his dog, or her dog was on the front page, the people used to sell like hotcakes. And I used to work at X as a company where, which was outside Leeds, because Leeds is an industry town in UK, where you had to work on a Saturday, Sunday. I even worked at a police station also, which was a police identification parade. So we had a batchmate called Ritu Raj Kanda, who was a sick chap. He used to take me, and it was very frightening to go to a police station and participate in like, have you, if you've seen British movies or American movies, how you stand and you. Uh, The, the the witness comes and identifies you, so very frightening at times. But we used to get eight to ten pounds and all. So part time was a good experience, and there was time you could because five days was classes and three hours per day in MBA. They don't teach lot of mugging like the way we teach in India. 
it is a lot of uh, group work a lot of case studies a lot of concept teaching so you have to do a lot of research you have to understand on your own and then prepare case study so we were very clear that monday to friday is work day no part time work saturday sunday is part time work so that is how we had structured so whatever is given on a monday we have to finish on monday whatever we study on tuesday we have to finish on tuesday so that you manage your time saturday sunday was totally free either you sleep at home you work part time you go to hindu temple or you go to gurdwara or whatever you want to do so it was totally free you could be relaxed also so it is like uh, it it helps you to learn time management when when you go abroad apart from hard work obviously you have to cook your food you have to wash your toilets and at the same time you have to choose part time work so it it helps you in terms of learning how to do time management one more question that i come across a lot sir i would like to ask you what what about the accent difference because a lot of students uh, who who recently went to uk they complain a lot that that sir i have not been able to understand i know it's the english language not 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 in terms of professors obviously they they speak a lot clearer so so everybody can understand but when it comes to part time job how do you find it was it tough for you to understand the accent of your colleagues because you were working in a police station so you might be getting uh, uh, people from africa and all those regions from india from pakistan uh, coming up so how do you find it was it difficult for you to adjust with those accent or is was it okay thing just to add to your point while teaching also accent was not very difficult because english people one is they speak slowly they speak very softly so you could understand uh, there were some problems sometimes when people were there with scottish accent which is northern part of uk but with the typically england based people in the london scotland wales etc there is not a problem and obviously you get used to it because the class which is there we have pe- we had people from turkey we had people from china we had people from botswana seychelles nigeria uh, south africa so obviously during that one year you always speak in english so you develop that accent you hear more you talk more in that accent so things change automatically and when you are working part time you deal with customers obviously what typical british customers but <laughs> it is not very difficult i would say you, you get we we are from india so we speak in english so it is not very difficult for us to understand and uh, uh, comprehend english but there there could be cases from people from china and other countries where english is not a spoken language so it is difficult but i think it is not to be worried a lot because we if you are from delhi from cbsc boards i think english should be okay if you give a ielts exam you should get at least 6.5 ielts um, so talking about the other like let, let's say we are from cbsc board or icsc board so it may be a bit better for us to understand and uh, how is it going to be for the guy from mp board or kerala board or tamil nadu board board how will no, it be yeah no i i assume it can be difficult because uh, uh, it is tough but uh, when you, when you go to foreign universities lot of foreign universities take your ielts exam beforehand or you took your toefl exam so that is a clear indicator that you should have a minimum standard because in mba programs and other programs you are expected to ask questions also so it is not that you are only writing notes and listening and going home and preparing for exam so you are expected to participate in group discussion presentations and all even in mba we had presentations and they were like scheduled in such a sequence that you used to get terms every week for two three presentations in different groups different company different country groups also every course the group was also changed so that you don't become friends with one group and somebody is presenting you don't get a chance so that was the preparation of mba also and i don't think language is a big barrier if you have made the mind if you have the passion to study and if you have determined and if you are going on your own own money then it makes lot of sense to be prepared watch english movies read newspapers take some exams take some classes and i don't think english is a barrier in any point of time okay so uh, i'll i'll quickly move on because the time is running now so i want to learn more and more about your jobs also okay so i'll, I'll stop the uk thing here otherwise i would like like to ask more questions about uk like how uh, studying with different countries people benefit can you quickly just in one minute give me give the audience an idea how studying with uh, people from different countries help you in in mental growth and and in future basically studying with students of different countries one is we do case studies so perception is very different students come out with different ideas if we have seen coke and pepsi in india fighting for things but in different countries like botswana coke is not there only pepsi is fighting so things become different because they have a local partner or a local brand to fight on so i think working with students from different countries you learn their cultures they also assimilate your culture you learn a lot of good things and you understand a smaller country which is below you also and you 
a better country which is above you also because india is a developing country so that we are above also we are below also some country okay great so i'll quickly move on to your job section sir because it's it's a half an hour show and our audience also want to ask some questions to you so we'll keep 5 10 minutes for q and a so uh, now coming back from uk and i'm like uh, do you use your psw visa or not or was there a psw visa at that time or not for audience psw is a post study work visa which allows you to work for 2 years in uk and it gives you work permit for uk so the number one question is this number two how it's a, it's it's a all about like you were in telecom how come you landed to to the education abroad industry and and become the living legend of the industry today everybody wants to follow you and I'm like how come that happened like why you left that industry in education abroad and that's to as a director telecom was a good industry i was working with them in 98 99 but i didn't know business school uh, doc professor indo lock Professor, uh, sorry, Ken Wilmer, Lord uh, Lord Wilmer of Leeds, we call him. He is uh, now an MP in Rajya Sabha, which is called the House of Lords. He met me in uh, December 99, 98, and he asked me to join the uh, University of Leeds and open a university office. But initially, I was not keen. So the first thing I said, boss, I am I am a telecom engineer working with telecom for last eight years and education. I don't know ABC, but the point he raised is, Pankaj, in MBA, we taught you what? We taught you. management of product so whether you do a marketing of education or you do a marketing of telecom product it's same so there's no harm so why don't you join us so i said okay i'll come and join that was a venture i started in 1999 when i shifted from telecom to education i know it was it was a tough decision to make because telecom was booming but i said let's do it there's no harm you have to be an entrepreneur at times you know so needs of supporting uh, they were planning to open an office we had big alumni in india and the dean was very keen and he uh, the new head of international office came with him so this is how life changed so okay, so like uh, so uh, th- there is a lesson to learn from this that changing industry doesn't have a harm if if you go into the same aura or gen- genre so if you are in marketing and if you go from one stream to another industry in the same marketing field so it's it's all okay there is no harm in it Okay, so what about your current job? So you currently uh, as a working as a regional director for UTS. How do you you do you land being a being a role model for UK for everyone? Now you came to to Australia and then you're doing fab job. So can you just share some like we we have a time constraint, but but we still have three minutes. If you can quickly tell us something about UTS and how does it benefit a student and how come you landed in UTS from from career plus consultant. Basically, if you see my background, I have been into UK as you correctly said for a long time. I've been a UK alumni. I worked with uh, UK for a long time actually, and then in career plus with my own agency, I have did uh, Australia also, I did New Zealand also, I did Canada also, I did Ireland and all. But uh, always like Australia was a big country where I did not focus much during that time. So I thought when this opportunity came, uh, when I met UT, University of Technology, Sydney College, uh, my boss Peter Harris. and he interviewed me i thought like this is a good opportunity because uh, uh, they had lot of things to do in india it was a good office uh, there was an office in connaught uh, connaught place now near nehru place so i thought let me learn australia also because that is a country which was missing from my portfolio so i let me be uh, have good knowledge and uh, at least put some time to understand what australia is so we are handling uh, we are the pathway provided for uts university and we are fully owned by uts university which is university of technology sydney in based in sydney Uh, a good university with a very strong technical courses, engineering courses, as the name suggests. Very popular business school, very uh, popular design, architecture, and other courses. So that that's great, sir. Let's uh, uh, though uh, when when I was I'm I'm like to talk to you. Hours doesn't count for me. We we spoken to each other on four four hours, and it's it seems like it's just a minute. But because we have a time limitations today, and then the audience is there, I've already received. If I'll tell you a lot of messages. that who all is looking forward to ask questions on on my on my phone so i'll, I'll start opening the session for questions so it it would be a q and in a session there would be couple of students there who who will be asking you generic inquiry and what to get get counseled for you so it's it would be a just quick 5 to 10 minute session just before that i just still need one more uh, tip tips from you so because you are you are a role model for a lot of people working in the education abroad industry and and you have given lot of tips to me right from reading the newspaper every day to to lot of other things which which has been done done a great deal for me what what is the one one tip that you would like to, to give to to the youngsters to the colleagues in the industry today to become successful in this industry 
and then then we'll open the floor for the q and a after that over to I you i think sir. a good question i think a good question both is i think one is people have to learn and uh, uh, create knowledge so education times of times of india is a very very big uh, newspaper i spend one hour every day even after this time i think knowledge is very important plus you have to work with your partners your agents and uh, everybody so you should not have egos in life that i have become a university rep so i can behave anyway so i think that is very important to respect each people because these are the partners and agents who are giving university students so you have to respect them and respect your juniors also respect your seniors also because yes. seniors are the people yes. who teach you everything in life my bosses have been always very good and i have always thankful to them they have uh, guided me and uh, supported me always so respect your seniors i think that is very important no oh, great thanks thanks a lot for the lovely advice sir so i'll be opening the floor to the q and a so everybody who is attending the session i think you can uh, enable your mic and can ask the questions to the pankaj sir please remember it's just a 10 minutes we have with him so please be quick about your questions over to the audience um uh, hi oh uh, pankaj sir good morning good morning um actually i have a question that what if a student is getting failed in their exam like in a year or you know in just a one semester so will they get a you know extra month to crack that, that exam or like you know they do have to drop out their you know whatever course they have chosen for so what happen no you are talking about a indian university you are talking about a foreign university and what course uh, no i'm talking about the universities which are in uk or like about the overseas yeah So obviously, like in India, students fail in engineering college, in MBA students fail also. Uh, obviously, in UK also and Australia also. So uh, the university gives obviously you to you to a chance to appear for the exam. So in one same semester you have chance to appear. After the, after one semester also you get chance. So failure is a part of life. You have to learn from it and you have to prepare well and go further. So don't worry about it. If you fail also, you have time to cover it up. So do they give second chance? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Thank you so much. And uh, I have one more question for you. As you are a part of UK, you have been a student over there. So I would like to know that what happened pressure week, like the one who goes for the first time into the university. What happened in that pressure week? Uh, most of the universities across the world have a orientation week, which is called induction week. In which what happens? The banks people come, the local police people come, a uh, lot of people come. Uh, student union staff does. There are groups who will take you across the university, show you the city, and you can buy second-hand books. To, uh, tourism people come. And it's more of orientation, getting used to the city, so that once you are uh, through with your studies, the second week, so that you don't waste time in knowing where to go, what to do, where to eat, food, and all those things. that is basically a very important week okay, not to great. thank you so much okay thanks swati for your questions thank anybody thank you so much thank you as it's my first time sir so i'm really sorry it's hard for me also to understand because uh, i have to unmute people and then uh, they'll ask the question so i'm also learning because i'm i'm not it geek you know like so i'm also trying to learn how how to unmute people how to say they have they have raised hand and allow them to ask the questions so <coughs> two people who have raised their hand lakshmi pati yeah so lakshmi pati i'm allowing your mic and i have allowed your camera you can go ahead hello lakshmi pati i'm really sorry i've kept you waiting you can ask your question uh, good morning uh, mr pangit sir jain sir yes so my question is regarding the national education policy and uh, lots of all these years we are saying that the indian education system is quite rigid and uh, now now there are many changes here from uh, 10 10 plus 2 a system is changed from 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 so how who's going to impact the education system in coming years can you give some insights on that please if you see the new education policy if you read that entire document lot of positive points are there lot of internships have been built in and this 3 year 4 year option if you read the curriculum exactly there is a option of a 3 year degree also there is a option of a 4 year degree also it means the four year degree is a research based degree right so things have not changed but lot of uh, uh, deliberations are done there is a new uh, abc which is the academic bank of credit uh, which is there 
so you have your exit option after 2 years also 3 years also you can do a degree based in chennai and do a degree based in delhi university also you can combine courses and get degrees so lot of positive things if you see the new nep has come 2022 2020 has come after 30 plus years so there is a big change it will take time to do the change because changing a thing for my established minds is not easy i am based in delhi for last 10 days i have been reading uh, reading about delhi university professors and teachers complaining how will we start this four year course blah 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 it was implemented in 2013 did not happen but finally the academic council has approved it and it will go ahead karnataka also has approved and implementation of nep has been uh, processed so i think things are open there are uh, projects in the pipeline for international universities to open campuses in india there are projects to open training programs in india so you can do 1 plus 2 programs you can do 2 plus 1 programs in india and abroad a lot of new options have been opened i think the government has made the policy much more clear which was not earlier i think we should it is good for country actually Yep, thank you for your insights and uh, the gpd is spending around from 3% to 6% i think i think there is a welcoming move thank you so much sir. so the, there is a lot of queues around this pankaj sir so like we we might have a different session all together for this <laughs> it's, it, it 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 can't be solved in just 5 minutes thanks a lot lakshmi pati for asking your question so we we are just tied up with time it's just one or two minutes more i'll allow if somebody is there to ask question rest of people just to let you know that pankaj sir is also available on his email id i'll request pankaj sir to please uh, tell your email id so the people who have the questions because today we have time limitations so that he can they can email you and and everybody please be uh, bear with him because he is very very highly occupied whenever he'll get time he'll be more than happy to counsel his student pankaj sir can you just uh, uh, tell the audience your email id on which they can reach you for some questions my email id is pankaj p a n k a j dot j j a i n at u t s college u t s college c o w l e g e dot e d u dot a u for us okay so like we have more than 60 uh, uh, attendees today but sir because of the time constraint i know you, you are highly occupied and it's it's half an hour done so i would like to conclude the session today and and would like to say thanks a lot for you to coming on our show today and and being the guest for the inaugural episode of of talk to the experts thanks a lot sir thanks for coming thank you thank you thanks, for everybody. inviting me thank you uh, unique experts and ashok sir for giving me this opportunity it's an honor for me sir i think somebody is still have a question and if, if you have time then only no we can take it we can take it yeah. let the student queries be handled there's no harm i uh, just have to see who is he and i'll just allow quickly so that uh, students are very important they're very confused <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true <laughs> but but they'll keep on coming with question and and because i am new to this i also don't know i mean i can see the notification then i have to click on the notification and see who has raised their hand and then uh it, it's it's kind of uh, strange for me we, this is this is what a learning is from the next episode onwards we are looking forward for some other software when it where it would be very easy for people to ask the questions and come up front so sir i i leave for that for now because it's really hard for me if i'll tell you honestly to find that guy but but as you have already told your email id to all of them they'll they'll try to get you or or if they just in case get to me my email id is mudit mudit at uniexperts.io so you can either mail me or 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 pankaj jain i'll definitely forward your emails and request to pankaj sir thanks a lot for for coming to the show today sir thank you thank you mudit thank you unique thank you so much